Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Brett Field, AKA Sketchy Brett, YouTube's sketchiest artist. And today I'm gonna to be talking you through all the equipment and supplies that I use as a professional artist. These are the supplies that I use on a daily basis to produce my artworks that end up in high value homes around the world. Make sure you watch till the end of the video because I've got a tip that you won't be expecting. So let's start off with paper. Right, when it comes to paper, I typically work from about 260 grams plus. On a bigger pieces, always over 300. And for this, I use three different brands. Archers, I really like their watercolor blocks, as well as Hannon Muller. When I go big on paper, it's almost always out of a roll of Fabriano. So now let's get on to markers. Now there's a lot of different markers that I use, but there's a few that I really like. One of my favorites is the trusty workhorse, the Lamy Safari. And it's become very popular for a lot of good reasons. It's a good, trusty, robust fountain pen. And what's nice about fountain pens and why I like them is because you can get a variety of nib width just by using pressure. So because I can use pressure to get different line weights, I don't have to be switching between different markers. And that for me, is the number one reason. However, it's certainly not the only marker I use. Another favorite, the Faber-Castell Echo Pigment. Now these come in a variety of sizes and I typically have a 0 0.0, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 and 0.7. And the same goes for my next favorite, the Copic Multiliner. They come in the same range of sizes and is a nice trusty and reliable marker. The other cool thing about these is that they come with replaceable nibs and refillable ink. As soon as I start working on these big canvases, I can no longer use fine liners or even fountain pens. And that's when I switch to paint markers. And my favorite by far is the Posca PC-1M. That's the 0.7 bullet nib. And the nice thing about this bullet nib is that it allows me to do very fine lines and with the same pen, by pressing a bit harder, I can get much, much thicker lines and I can get a good flow of ink. The nice thing about that is it's almost like working with a fountain pen, but I'm working on canvas. Now, I know a lot of people struggle when it comes to working on canvas with markers, but there's a couple of little things that you gotta bear in mind and it'll make your life a lot easier. Number one, get a good quality, fine weave cotton canvas. I personally only use the Italian linear canvas. It's a very, very fine weave and I can get it nice and smooth and it's almost like working on paper by the time I've prepped it. Now, when it comes to prepping canvases, it's very, very important that you use a high quality gesso. Now, I use a white gesso by Golden Paints and I put a minimum of two coats. That allows my canvas to be nice and smooth, but still have a little bit of tooth to it. So that when I'm working my paint marker, I've got some feedback coming from the canvas, like I would with a cold pressed paper. Now let's talk paints. Now I'm known for my watercolor look, but I don't use watercolors. Now I know that comes as a bit of a surprise to many of you who've watched my channel. The reason for this is because I love the look of watercolor and I love the interaction of the paint and the water and what we can do and the organic nature of it. But what I didn't like is some of the drawbacks because they're more susceptible to environmental degradation. So I wanted to find an acrylic solution and I found that with golden fluid acrylics. The reason I like these so much is because I get a very bold saturation of color. And talking of color, they got loads of them. So I'm never scratching for a color. I've always got what I need and I've got a huge variety. The only drawback really is that you can't rework acrylic in the same way that you can watercolor. That for me is an easy trade-off. Now if there's a color that I don't have in fluid acrylics, all I do, I take one of these golden acrylic tubes and I apply a golden airbrush medium. And that pretty much creates a fluid acrylic. And that is everything I use to create the artwork. But there's one thing that I've left out. Now that is my very trusty Copic markers. Now I don't use those in the actual artwork, but where I do use them is in my sketchbook. So what I'll do when I start working with a client, once we've discussed some ideas and settled on a color palette, 
I will use these ink markers to produce a few quick sketches so that they get a nice visual idea of what I'm going to be producing for them. And even more, when I'm working with interior designers, they've got something to go back to their client and might be struggling to visualize what me and the interior designer have got in mind. Right, so now you've seen pretty much everything that I use as a professional artist. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What are you using? What do you think that I've missed out on and what you think I should try? I might have some blind spots because I gravitate to what I know and what I've used for a long time. So now you know what I use, this is how I use them.